be very, very quiet. All right, so I'm still out to eliminate speaker buzz that's coming from my speakers, some hiss in my theater room, some more deliberate buzzing that I get in my living room with a collection of Anthem, Focal, and Parasound audio equipment, some Triad and Arundel acoustics and other things in there as well. If you've watched, there's a couple videos on the channel, one where I tried uh, some PS Audio Noise Harvesters, didn't do anything for me. My last video, I did a whole teardown of my rack, disconnecting things, isolating things, trying to ground stuff together. That didn't get me any kind of clarity. So today I've got four additional items. I kind of went crazy on Amazon buying some stuff based on recommendations and some other thoughts that may, just may, uh, help to alleviate some of the speaker hum, speaker hiss, speaker buzz, and reduce kind of the passive noise floor of my setup. So we're gonna do them one by one, put them in the system, and see if these changes, these tweaks, make any difference. All right, first up, we have the IFI AC purifier. So as much as people kind of ran down the PS Audio noise harvester in the comments of my prior videos, there were quite a few folks that said or recommended uh, devices, adapters, accessories from IFI and had commented that those helped kind of clean up their power. So this is advertised as an active noise cancellation with intelligent AC diagnostics. This is a pretty big beast. This is a little bigger than the noise harvesters were. Three prongs, you plug it into an outlet and it has lights here. It's supposed to basically tell you some things, clean up your power, maybe some noise and some hum will go away and give an indication about potentially what's wrong. So if I look at the directions, we say insert the wall outlet that supplies the audio system uh, with main electricity. The next table depicts the different readings of the LEDs. So green and green is normal. Uh, red and green, we've got a polarity error. Two reds, we've got a ground error. Earth ground is missing or faulty. And if we have no lights, in rare cases, uh, AC purifier in auto cutout mode from over voltage or electrical short. So basically it, it shut itself down and it's not working. So are we gonna have all greens? Or are we gonna have some reds? I think this one will be interesting, particularly if I have some kind of electrical wiring problem and, and this can show it off. So let's plug it in, see what happens. So there we are, we're plugged into the outlet that all the audio equipment in my system is plugged into. And I've got a double green light, no faults, no ground. We're, it's finding earth ground, all of that. Let's turn the system on. I'm going to walk around to my speakers and we will see if any hum or buzz is going away with the IFI AC purifier. No change. So I'm getting my cardio in again on this Saturday morning, running up and down, running my stairs up between my living room and back down here a bunch of times. But so with this plugged in, same same really light simple hiss in the home theater speakers same buzz in the living room speakers no different two green lights 109 bucks this is going back to amazon a lot of people in the comments or a number of folks in the comments swore by this thing that it made a positive impact in their systems that's great sound off if you have this ifi device or other uh, ifi accessories this wasn't mine so two green lights i, I, I like that at least so no specific indication of lack of ground or other voltage irregularity. All right, next up, I've got some more audio cables or some new audio cables. So one of the things that I might suspect, a difference of why I might get some buzzing in the living room, and I just have kind of the quiet hiss, the, the soft hiss in the theater room, is I am using an RCA output to an XLR input from the Anthem STR here to the Parasound amplifiers. Uh, for those channels. Everything from my AVM70 for the theater, including the subwoofers, is all XLR to XLR. Uh, however, these triad rack amps, I re really wish they did, but unfortunately they don't, they don't have XLR inputs. So I had just been using the RCA outputs here of the STR, and I have some world's best cables that are RCA to XLR, basically conversion cables. RCA out, XLR in. And I had to do it that way because on the Parasound A52 amplifier, it does have RCA inputs and it has XLR inputs, but there's a switch. You have to set the mode, like is the amp expecting one input type or the other? And you can only have it set for all of the channels of the amp uh, the same way. So I have to do XLR input down there 
but I was doing RCA output to match the triad here. So in any case, I've got RCA to RCA for the two subwoofer amplifiers, and they're actually much quieter than the speakers that are in the room. So I figured why not maybe suspect, who knows, maybe the RCA to XLR cable is introducing more of the problems specific to those speakers in the living room. So I got the right length, same cable, same wire, everything else the same, Nutric, Mogami, world's best cables here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one at a time. I'm gonna leave one RCA to XLR and I'm gonna make the other XLR to XLR and listen in the living room. If one speaker quiets down versus the other, maybe this is it. All right, so there we are for fun. I disconnected the left channel upstairs RCA connector. I plugged in one of the XLRs output going down, 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 down to that one A52. That leftmost amp channel there is the speaker upstairs. So the left speaker upstairs is on the top A52, and then the one down below it there, the left amplifier, leftmost amplifier channel is the right speaker upstairs. So I've got this other one disconnected. I've got the new one plugged in. Let's fire it up. Once again, no difference. Left to right speaker, no change. I did place some content and made sure that like the audio signal, even though I'm using one XLR and one RCA, both speakers were reproducing sound like they were supposed to. And yeah, same buzzing, same level of noise, no, no change in its character. I guess in that case, it's good, right? An RCA to XLR connector itself doesn't have any inherent trouble or problems um, if you so need to use one. I might just go ahead and keep these anyway, just from a, a, a purist connectivity perspective uh, to, to stay straight instead of flipping over. But in this, for this purpose, for this need, no, no impact or difference there. So next, the big honking boy here. Big old power supply. This thing is even even sturdier and more massive than I expected or I had inclination to think of from the pictures. So this is a Pangea, Pangea, uh, Pangea AC9SE power cable. So what I'm going to try with this is take that one A52 plus amp channel and instead of the included power cord that came with the amplifier, which is what I'm running right now, it's far, far longer than it needs to be for my application. So I do have the excess power cable uh, spooled up in like a figure eight uh, kind of format. But this instead will allow me to just go straight amp into the Furman. And we'll see if anything, if there's any magic here um, in this power cord that might be preventing some noise, perhaps entering from the ground, from the power to the actual uh, amplifier channel itself, if that is in fact the the way, the, the line, the wiring that is related to or, or bringing in the noise. This, this thing, man, this thing is is crazy. Like if you needed, if, if you were gonna consider buying one of these, I guess, err on the side of caution that you may need to get the longer ones, right? So, cause you can't bend this thing, especially right around the connector. So I, I think I can make it fit just looping basically looping straight out the back of the rack and back in again pretty wild so let's let's plug this thing in and see what happens all right that beast is plugged in there i just had to go into the wall and we are into the back of that left that upper a52 plus that powers my left speaker up, uh, upstairs and the left speakers in all the theaters i couldn't even bend it around to get into the Furman right there. So we're just going into the wall. If I were to keep keep this as a solution for all the amps and want to plug it in in the firm, and I guess I need the longer one. This is the 0.6 meter uh, version of this cable. $200, I think it was. All right, so big honking Pangea power cable. No change, no difference. Same buzzing, uh, no difference in the character or volume of the noise. Just from a, a rack wiring perspective, this thing is pretty sweet. I would describe this as pretty sweet. Like this, this is a statement piece, I think, in the in the back of your rack saying that, yeah, I, I think I take power, I take power seriously. So that's not to say, though, that any of this stuff or maybe this cable in particular, keep in mind, I'm not listening for audio quality differences here. I'm just looking, listening right now or, or paying attention right now for ambient no or <clears throat> for noise floor 
and buzzing. So whether this thing makes any actual acoustical difference or benefit, that's hard to say as well. I'll have it for a little while, so maybe I'll actually take some measurements, use some Arc Genesis and do some speaker measurements with this in versus the normal cable. I know specifically Parasound in their documentation claims or, or prints that the Halo amps come with an audiophile grade power cord and they, they specifically write in there that they don't feel that there's any need or recommendation uh, to change the power cords to service the amplifiers. So, and again, I did have this going straight into the wall. So the Furman was bypassed through this and, and no difference there for me anyway. And the last thing to try, this one just came today, the IFI, another IFI, Silent Power DC Blocker. This was recommended in comments on some of the other videos. So we've got basically the three prong there. Plug it into the back of the device and then plug the regular power cord that you would go into there. I don't think this is going to do anything else in this case as well. I think this is kind of another like basically glorified ground lifter of sorts. 129 bucks also from Amazon. I think I will try this on the gaming PC also uh, in place of the Hum X and see if there's any difference there. But I'll talk about that maybe in a future video. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on the back of one of the A52 pluses and see if we have any difference. All right, so there's the noise, IFI DC noise blocker plugged into the back of the A52. No blocker on the bottom one. So we'll see upstairs if the left speaker is any quieter, no more or less buzzing, etc. than the right. I do really like the way this device plugs in at the back of the device. That's, I like the form factor. So, and the last one, no change. Uh, left to right speaker, same buzzing, same noise, same volume. As I said, I will mess around with this, I think, on the PC instead of the Hum X, just for, just for fun. The Hum X didn't make any difference for any of the buzzing, having plugged the amplifiers into that. So I didn't really expect this to really be the solution or make any considerable change regardless. So at this point, I don't know. If you've got other ideas, sound off in the comments. I think I'm done chasing these gremlins down. I really don't know what else to do or what else I could buy that could potentially solve this. So the theater noise really isn't bad. I mean, you have to take, you have to walk over the speaker, get close to it, and you hear a soft hiss. I'm not really worried about that. It's the buzzing in the living room that's a little bit more um, annoying to me anyway. You can hear it a reasonable distance away from the speaker in when the room is quiet. It doesn't get in the way of content. So whenever anything is actually playing, music, movies, TV show, people talking, whatever, it's drowned out immediately, but I would really still like to know why it's doing that. At this point, my, my, my last hypothesis is that the run of speaker wire between the rack down here and the, the, the speaker installation by the television, those wires are picking something up. That, that, that's, that's as much, I think, as I can figure as my final guess. Through the walls, next to some power cables in the walls, something, th those wires needed to be uh, that speaker wire needed to be better, uh, bigger, better shielded, something along those lines. So I guess the ultimate test will be is if getting into next year, I actually go, uh, go down a road of rebuilding the living room out a little bit, rebuilding that wall to be able to set up and test different speakers. And I think there's a very high likelihood when I do that, that the source equipment for the living room will go up to the living room. And I will stop using the long runs of cable and that speaker wire between these zones. And, and so I could probably even test that out a little more scientifically as well. If I really wanted to, I could pull the focals out of the wall. I could disconnect equipment, put everything closer together on, on different speaker connections, different speaker cable, uh, re you know, removed from the installation and removed from the long run and see if we buzz. That's a lot of work. So I don't know if we'll get to that. We'll see what the future holds. If you have any ideas, sound off in the comments. All this stuff though, ultimately I think is going back to Amazon. So otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you have some more thoughts, share them in the comments. If you'd like to support the channel, check down in the description, super thanks, channel memberships, merchandise, Amazon affiliate links, and all of that. So come on back for more home theater discussion and more fun than these failed scientific experiments.